Hey everyone, I'm Amy Connell. Thanks for tuning in to Lessons to My Teenage Self, a Christ-centered, diet culture-free show about all things health for teen girls. This is the shortcut you need to thrive in your physical, mental, and spiritual health. As a personal trainer and nutrition coach, I'm passionate about empowering you to find your best version of health. Each week, we dig into one topic I wish I had known as a teen. As I'm recording, it is back to school season. This is dropping um, kind of mid to late August. And depending on where you live, you may have started school as well. Um, I know that I got both of my boys back off to college or back to college. Um, One of them is a freshman. And so I am kind of entering into a new season. So if you are starting something new, you are not alone. I am right there with you. And I'm trying to figure out how to cook for just my husband and I. Um, That's different because I'm used to cooking for not only two other people, but two other young men who are athletes who ate a lot. And so I think I need to figure all of that out. And of course, I want to have a nice balance of fun foods and also foods that you know treat me well, help me help us feel and function better. I think there's probably a lot going through your feeds and a lot of discussion about healthy lunches and healthy breakfasts and how to make your school year healthy. And I am in general in support of that. In fact, I just released an episode a couple weeks ago on some breakfast ideas. So if you need some of those, go back and listen. But it got me thinking about this whole concept of healthy and How do we even know if we are healthy? I thought, well, we're going to do an episode about that. So I sat down to record and then I thought, wait a minute, I've already written about this. This is chapter seven in my book, Your Core Strength, called How Do I Know If I'm Healthy? So rather than recreating all of that, I am going to share with you the audiobook version of chapter seven, How Do I Know If I Am Healthy? And of course, if you like listening to books, the audio version of Your Core Strength is available on Audible and Spotify and audiobooks.com. So basically, wherever you get your audiobooks, you can purchase it there. And before I get into this chapter, I just want to share a quick little story. I had given my uh, this book, Your Core Strength, to someone who I work with, and she didn't really know a lot of what I do. So she kind of went into this um, with an open mind, not really knowing and just kind of wanting to support me. And by the way, this, even though this book is written for young women, she is about 40. So this was definitely applicable to her as well. But one of the things that she said with your core strength is she said, what I love and what really opened my eyes is that my unique body is going to look and to weigh differently than other people's. She said, it never occurred to me that I don't have to worry so much about my weight and that instead I can focus on some of the other metrics of what makes me healthy. And she got teary and she said, I'm not an emotional person, but you have no idea the freedom this has given me because I don't have to focus so much on the weight. Our society focuses so much on weight quite honestly, it's exhausting. As I have gone through my own intuitive eating journey, and anti diet culture journey, and then I get on Facebook or the socials or Instagram, I just it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And it's exhausting. So I just want this chapter to hopefully give you some freedom to hopefully give you a different perspective about your health and that it's not tied up in the number on the scale. And so I pray, truly, I pray that this will lift any kind of anxiety or angst you may have about your weight. So let's dig in and let's listen to chapter seven from my book, Your Core Strength, called How Do I Know If I'm Healthy? Chapter 7. How Do I Know If I'm Healthy? Pretend an alien from outer space was dropped into our American culture and given Instagram. 
if you typed in hashtag healthy or pretty much any other variation of that and asked them to define health based on what they saw, how do you think they would respond? My guess is having a lean body with super defined muscles, eating food that makes for pretty pictures or exercising a lot. This may surprise you, but I'm going to argue that these things don't actually mean someone is healthy. One reason is that we have no idea what these people are doing to look that way. Also, as we know, the picture doesn't share the full story. Skin perfecting, sparkle producing, and light diffusing filters abound. And we tend to only show our good sides on social media. While I pride myself on being real on the socials, I don't exactly put up pictures of my t-shirts that show swoob, sweaty boob, or the acne that still pops up every now and then. So no, what we see isn't fully real. And those pictures don't define health either. To be clear, health does not have a specific look. But if we can't define health by what we see, how can we define it? First, let's talk about what does not indicate health. One, weight does not equal health. As we will discuss, weight does not correlate to health. It's possible to be healthy in a bigger body and unhealthy in a smaller body. Gaining or losing five or 10 pounds does not necessarily mean you are more or less healthy. In fact, the right weight for you may be bigger or smaller than what you want. Consider the set point theory, which states that our bodies have a preset weight baseline hardwired into our DNA. According to this theory, our weight and how much it changes from a set point might be limited. Some of us have higher weight set points than others, and our bodies fight to stay within these ranges. In other words, this means that, according to this theory, your body is going to be healthiest within a certain size range whether you like it or not. Because remember, we are original creations and our diversity represents the body of Christ. Number two, BMI does not equal health. BMI, short for body mass index, is basically a ratio of your height to your weight. Because it only measures weight, it doesn't take into consideration other factors like muscle mass and hydration. Muscle tissue is more dense than fat, so it takes up less space. If a body has a high concentration of muscle, the BMI has no way of taking that into account and may categorize that body incorrectly. Want proof? Google professional athletes with a high BMI. Even the American Medical Association has recently acknowledged it's not a useful health tool. So why are we still focused on it? We shouldn't be. If we can't tell if someone is healthy by looking at them, and we can't, then what can we look at? Here are five metrics to know if you are healthy. Number one, blood metrics. Your blood can tell you all sorts of things about your health, like hormone levels, cholesterol, and metabolic levels like your blood sugar. If you're not feeling well, go to a doctor. If what you have isn't easily diagnosable, don't be surprised if the first order you receive is to go to the lab for blood work. Number two, sleep quality. A bad night's sleep can make us all feel crummy. This is not made up and probably not news to you, but sleeping poorly does more than just make you tired. The Cleveland Clinic shows several ways sleep deprivation affects your health. Fatigue, low energy, and excessive sleepiness, uh, no shock there. Irritability, brain issues that can cause blurred vision, memory lapse, poor reaction time, and drooping eyelids. Lowered immune system response, causing you to get sick more easily. Higher than normal blood sugar levels. Impaired learning, poor concentration, and decreased school performance. Do you know you need to sleep more but have a hard time doing it? We'll cover this in chapter nine, but if you're consistently not sleeping well, this is a sign that your short-term and long-term health are suffering. Number three, mental health. Let's say you have a friend who is super focused on eating well and exercising. 
On a superficial level, she looks like she has it all together, but she's cranky and anxious about every bite of food and quite frankly, not super fun to be around. Would you describe this friend as healthy? Maybe the physical metrics are fine, but from a mental health perspective, I'd argue no. All that stress and anxiety affects the body. Symptoms like upset stomach, headaches, extreme fatigue, breathing problems, pounding heart, and more are all examples of what happens to our bodies when we are stressed. We'll cover ways to optimize our mental health in the next chapter. Number four, menstrual cycle. Assuming you've already begun having periods, are they occurring regularly? Irregularities in your menstrual cycle or losing it entirely could indicate several issues. Formerly known as amenorrhea, losing your period is often a sign of a health problem. Possible reasons include having a very low intake of calories or fat, low body weight, a low percentage of body fat, or emotional stress. This is called hypothalamic amenorrhea, in which the gland that regulates your cycle slows or stops releasing the hormones that control menstruation. Having PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome, when a woman's body produces more androgens, a type of hormone, than normal, or thyroid problems, which control metabolism and play a role in puberty and menstruation. Pro tip. The reasons above are for educational purposes and are not intended to diagnose a medical issue. If you're concerned, see a doctor. Despite the fact that not getting monthly periods is easier and more convenient, not having regular periods typically means there's something going on that needs attention. Again, talk with a trusted healthcare professional if you're worried so they can take necessary action. Number five, functionality. How well do you go about your day? Can you take the stairs without getting winded? Crawl under the couch to get your dog's chew toy? Get through school with enough energy for the day? Step into an impromptu game of spike ball? Run around with the kids at the camp where you volunteer? These are examples of daily functionality. Basically, how do you feel while you're doing your daily tasks? No matter their size or shape, when our bodies don't function well, we fail to fully thrive. Your body has a holistic way of telling you if you're healthy. One metric does not tell the whole story, and Instagram certainly doesn't. We can't assess health by looking at a single metric, and we certainly can't tell if we're healthy simply by our sizes or weights. Whatever size range your body falls in, it has several ways of communicating its overall health with you as long as you know how to listen. There you go. I hope that gives you a new and different perspective on what it means to be healthy. Remember, you can get your core strength pretty much anywhere you enjoy getting your books. That's all for today. Take today's lesson and go out there and live the life God has for you and your amazing original body.